Hello, you weren't expecting to hear from me today and I wasn't expecting to be doing uh, this either, but uh, there we are. I wanted to talk to you about something, um, specifically um, addiction and dopamine and pain killing and where mills and boons come to play in all of this. Right, a thousand years ago, when I was young, I was in college studying uh, to do a law degree and every Friday night I would go out and I would drink heavily because, you know, a whole week of learning about contracts and laws and people breaking laws and people being mean to each other and judges and courts and judgments and everything. You know, you needed a bit of light relief. So I would drink heavily and then on Saturday I would spend the day in bed uh, roaring for a bucket and in between roaring for a bucket um, I used to read Mills and Boons because old woman used to get three of them out of the library every week and it was just so enjoyable. After the hard week reading about the hard things, it was just such a comfort to, um, to escape into those books, even though, I mean, they were very formulaic and, uh, and back in those days there was no writing in them. So anyway, um, and then at the end of the day I would suddenly arise restored and refreshed from the bed and, and, then, and then go out and drink heavily again uh, on the Saturday night. But for years afterwards, I didn't read Mills and Boons, you know, and I am ashamed to say that I was a bit schneery about them, do you know, a bit schneery, you know, about their formulaicness and the fact that nobody ever got rid of them, you know, because there was no sex and, and you know, all the, um, the contrivances to make sure that the sex didn't happen, I used to, you know. Anyway, a couple of weeks ago, I suddenly got the ferocious longing to read Mills and Boons and I don't know, it came out of nowhere and I don't know, I mean, since Dad died, it kind of, all kinds of odd memories and emotions and stuff is moving through me. Anyway, I wanted the comfort of them, but didn't I find the Mills and Boons modern? And modern means we do the riding. This book includes riding. If you see modern, that's what it translates as. And, uh, and I read one and it was about uh, 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 a really good looking Italian count and, and a virginal girl with red hair. And I enjoyed it so much that I downloaded another. And that was about this incredibly good looking Italian count, very rich, and this beautiful virginal uh, red haired little girl. Not little girl, you know, young woman. And I loved it. And I thought, my Jesus, this is worrying, but I'm going to download another one. So I downloaded another one. <coughs> they happened to be about this like really, really good looking Italian count um, and this beautiful porcelain skinned red haired young woman. And it was just so enjoyable, you know? Anyway, I'd read about six and I was really starting to worry because I was, you know? And then I thought, no, I'm going to stop worrying. And I sort of understood what was going on for me. Right, I am an addict. I am an alcoholic. Um, when I drank, my brain used to make dopamine or whatever chemical that made me feel happy, do you know? And so after I got sober, I realized that I have that, do you know, that happy chemical seeking uh, thing for almost everything. So like, I get it from food and I get it from spending money um, and I get it from, you know, being online. Um, and suddenly I understood the whole thing of, you know, sex and love addicts, you know, the people who chase those feelings that you have at the start of a relationship, you know, like they're crazy. You know, you're crazed with love and you can't eat, you can't sleep and you're like having sex around the clock and you're just, you know, really in an altered state. That's what I was getting from me reading the Mills and Boons. Like I knew that they were nothing like real life, you know, and like they're nothing like the, the love that I have, you know, for, for himself, you know, or the love I have for my little friend here, Finton, my little helpmeet. Um, and once I understood it, it was all grand, you know? Um, and what I'm trying to say in a long-winded way is, if you read books for that reason, and you are made happy in that way. Go for it. Don't ever be shamed. Don't apologize. You know, we're all trying to get through life, you know, it, it, without encountering pain. You know, we're all trying to avoid pain, I suppose, and sometimes like there's no way around it. Um, but 
if you can find a way that kills the pain that isn't actually harming anyone else, then, you know, don't ever apologize for it. And this, you see, when I was reading about the Italian count and everything, I was thinking, Italian counts are lovely and everything, but <clears throat> is there any Swedish ones, do you know, or Danes? Or, do you know what I mean? Like just Norwegians, Finns, you know, that, that part of the world. And I remembered a Swedish writer called, I'm going to show you one of her books now, Simona, and I don't know how to pronounce the surname, Arnstead, Arnstead. And I'd read one of her books a long time, well, not a long time ago, maybe, I don't know, nine months ago, because a Swedish journalist had told me about her. Now, she, is, she does not write Mills and Boons. This is not a Mills and Boons book, but it is about that dynamic, you know, like the really good looking, really rich playboy lad. And the woman in this is a GP who works for Medicine Sans Frontières. And, you know, they, they have very different value systems and, and they take a guinea each other at the start, but then they fancy each other really. And then they do loads of riding. And this is really well written. And the, the translation is really good. Now, I read another one of hers. The first one was all in, but I'm preferring this one. And I just, if that's what you're in the humor for, I would recommend this so much. I am enjoying it so hugely. I keep wanting to snake off and read 10 pages. Do you know that sort of a way? And the woman in it has agency. You know, she's not like the 22 year old virgin. Like, I don't know, she's 34 or something. And she, you know, she's professional and she's articulate and she's able and she can earns her own money and, you know, has opinions. And, you know, she's not in any way a child, do you know? Anyway, that's just my whole take on not being ashamed of reading romance and, uh, and using whatever painkiller you can lay your hands on so long as you don't overdo it. Don't be like me is really what I'm saying. Uh, I have the disease of more. If a small little thing is nice, as far as I'm concerned, then a huge, giant, enormous bit is much better. Like, you know when, when tablet things say, take two, I think, I take four. You know, or if the recipe says, add a level teaspoon of nutmeg, I think we'll throw in a couple of tablespoons, heaped ones, you know, because, you know, if it's nice, more makes it nicer, which apparently isn't true. And apparently nutmeg uh, is a hallucinogenic and I, I really shouldn't be doing it. So there we are. Now I wanted to show you something else. You see, it's a week after my birthday, but I'm still eking it out. And something arrived in the post for me and it was from Jackson's Paints. <clears throat> and I thought, oh mother of God, I thought, I don't even remember ordering this. And I was ashamed, do you know? Because there, you know, I do it again, getting fixated with the paints and buying paints and ordering paints and up and down the stairs to Steve, you know, for the paints. Anyway, it wasn't from me. I hadn't ordered it. It was from my publishers. Hold on till I show you now. And this is like, this is like one of those suitcases that criminals have, do you know? And, and they go clunk, clunk with the buckles and then they open it up and then it's full of like stacks of 100 euro notes, you know? But this is even better because this is Sennelier paints. Is it Sennelier? Is that how you pronounce it? Am I saying it right? Yes, Sennelier, I said it right. But you see, look, it's all these beautiful colors. Beautiful, beautiful colors. And under here then, there is more beautiful colors. And come out, would you? And, 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 and a lovely piece of wood. Oh, it's an easel! Oh my God, it's an, it's an easel! And then there's things for um, varnishing. And there's things for cleaning your brushes. And there's a cloth for cleaning your brushes. And then there's, there's um, that thing. What's it called? A spatula. Might be a spatula. Hang on, I have to ask him. Do you know the word? We don't know the word. A thing, a paint knife. And then there's every colour in the world here. Because the thing is, if you want a colour and it is not actually in the box, there's this thing you could do and it's called mixing. You mix two colours together. You see, say if I wanted to have green, I would do mixing. See, I would add the yellow and the blue. I would do mixing. And then a new magical thing called green would happen. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Anyway, it's been lovely. And I have been painting really bleak, stormy, black cliffed says, or else then really, really cute, really cute cupcakes. So I have finished my proofreading, and now what I am doing is I am signing 5,000 pages. I'll show them to you. 
Do you see? Hang on now. I'll show you. Can you can you zoom in there, sir? Yeah. See, it says signed first edition, signed by me, and then these will go to England, and then they will get cello taped or print sticked into the book, um, and then it'll be put on sale. So that's all my news. So I will come back to you when I can. Um, it's a strange, a busy, strange time, but it is autumn. And Strictly is starting on Saturday. And I will be on, what's that thing? Front row on the BBC4 tonight. And tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, between ourselves, we'll be on at half past 11 on the morning on BBC4. Or you can podcast it via a podcasty way. I, uh, I hope you listen to it and I hope you enjoy it. And thank you very much. And I hope you're well. And I will be back at some stage. Bye bye.